Okay, uh, welcome to, to DOCAS uh, this Friday. And today uh, we have uh, the pleasure to have um, Luis uh, Narváez Macarro from um, Universidad de Sevilla, who is um, gonna talk about again, rings of differential operators and hashes mid derivation. Okay, well, thank you, Luis. Okay. Hello, everybody. So thank you to the organizer for this uh, invitation. So uh, actually, I, uh, I I prepare a Beamer presentation, but uh, I decided uh, to try to, to do the lecture uh, on the blackboard. So anyway, we can, we can change if we see that uh, the result is not, uh, it's not good, uh, but let's try. Perhaps it is useful for for the future. Uh, so uh, the, my, my talk, uh, especially the first one, will be mainly expository. And I will recall uh, probably very well now results for many people. But perhaps a good idea to, to start uh, slowly. And in that way, we can, we can motivate, better motivate uh, uh, the, the, the role and the things we hope about uh, hasse Smith derivation. So we start with something uh, really uh, basic. Basic is the Bayer algebra. So the Bayer algebra, uh, usually we start with a field of characteristic zero. And this is uh, the quotient of the free associative algebra uh, on two n variables by the well-known uh, <coughs> relations. Uh, so this is uh, perhaps the other one, the other side. one are always uh, commutative. So uh, this is something that I think that uh, all of us or all students uh, in the model theory starts start uh, with the study of this ring. But what is important for us is that this ring uh, uh, admits a frightful representation uh, on the polynomial algebra. This time, the commutative polynomial algebra. And in this representation, uh, it's very well known, uh, the xi goes to the multiplication by xi, and yi goes to the partial derivative. Uh, and what is interesting, and this is perhaps a, a good way to, to start uh, uh, by talking about differential operator, is that uh, in that way, uh, the Weyl algebra over a field of characteristic zero can be interpreted as some ring here, some sub ring here, which is called the differential operator of the polynomial uh, ring kx over k. Uh, Luis, can I interrupt you for, sorry. Yeah, sure, uh, sure. Just a, a couple of things. So yes. first of all, so uh, yeah, of, of course, uh, how to say. So uh, the x's and the y should commute with each other also. Uh, yes, I, 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 didn't, uh, I didn't wrote the, the, the other relationships. Uh, the other one ah. are commutatives all. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. I, Sorry, I, I... I pretended I pretended to 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 say I, I don't remember if I explicitly said or not, but this is the 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 the, the non-commutative relations in principle. All the other one, all the others are I commutative. See. Okay. So okay. The, Sorry, sir. So the x uh, the x uh, i x g is j 
uh, commute with uh, among them, and the y, the same thing. Okay, these are the, the important. Excuse me. Uh, yes. But thank you. Thank you. Uh, perhaps it's more clear now. Okay, so uh, so in that way, this uh, basic example, uh, <coughs> uh, it is uh, it is the first example of a ring of differential operator in in in, in commutative algebra. So let's uh, give uh, the the formal definition, or perhaps let's uh, recall the formal definition. If we start with a commutative ring. Uh, an arbitrary commutative ring and arbitrary commutative algebra. So the differential operator of A over K is a subring of the endomorphism, K, K linear endomorphism of A. And uh, this is the, the classical definition uh, by Grothendieck. Uh, and Actually, it uh, it appears as a filter ring, positive filter ring, and uh, this filtration is given inductively by the fact that the commutator is a. We can say we can see a inside the endomorphism by multiplication uh, is included in fi minus one of the AK. So this is, uh, this is a general definition for any, any commutative algebra over a commutative ring. And uh, uh, the, the, it, it comes uh, endowed with uh, a natural filtration. And what is a very interesting thing is that the graded, uh, the graded, uh, ID, the graded, uh, <coughs> the associated graded ring for this filtration is commutative. Actually, in the case of the Weyl algebra, and this is also elementary that uh, we we study uh, from the beginning, is that this uh, algebra. This Weyl algebra can be given with a filtration. Actually, we can put several filtrations, but uh, on with any of them, we obtain that the graded ring is a commutative polynomial ring in two n variables. Two n variables. So this is something very well known. You can see in any book uh, of. Uh, and actually, we learn this in any book of uh, the model theory. But this is a general fact that uh, uh, we have uh, the same property in a completely general situation. Okay. But there is another thing that this is uh, also uh, something. Yes, there is some. No question. Uh, there is something that. Uh, uh, it is interesting is that uh, the F zero term of this filtration is A and F one is the canonically is the direct sum of A and the derivations of A. Okay. So uh, this, this fact, it is important because uh, it implies that the grade one piece of uh, the associated graded ring is just the derivations over k. And so with this property and the fact that the graded, uh, the associated graded ring is commutative, we obtain a canonical map from the symmetric algebra of the of derivations into the associated graded ring. So, in that in that uh, way, we can see that what happened 
in the case of the Bile algebra, that, that it was, uh, if we can say, an explicit computation, uh, actually it comes from some canonical map uh, that uh, exists uh, always for any mm, commutative algebra over any commutative ring. Okay, so this is something uh, elementary but uh, important. Okay, so <laughs> in order to to understand, to better understand uh, what happened and many other things, it is useful to introduce uh, or to recall, perhaps uh, many of you already know, uh, to, to <coughs> recall what are Lee and her algebras. Uh, this was a notion um, studied by Teinhar in a famous paper. Uh, and actually, it was the evolution of other things uh, studied by Hertz and, and Palais and other mathematicians. Uh, and it is a, in some way, very natural uh, notion. Uh, so let's give the definition. We start always uh, with a, K, a commutative ring K and a commutative algebra. This is always the basic uh, thing. So, what is a Lee Reinhardt algebra over KA? So, it is uh, an uh, A module. L and this A model L is also a K Lee algebra. And both structures are uh, compatible. And in order to, to give a precise definition of, of this compatibility, we need uh, another data, is a map from uh, L to the derivations of A. So it is interesting, uh, it is important to recall that uh, the derivations, the K derivation of A is an A module, and it is also a K, a K Lee algebra because we can, we can uh, do the, the bracket of any derivations. And so uh, we have, an A model structure and K Lee algebra and a map, which is uh, a map of A. So rho is A linear. Uh, it is also a map of K Lee algebra. And there is a formula. And this is uh, in, in which way both structure are, are, are compatible. If we take two element, elements, L and we, we and we take an element in A. So when we perform this uh, bracket, so this is the same thing as, as this, but there is a term, and this term, uh, this another term. This term is right row lambda of a lambda prime, okay? So this map is usually called the anchor map, okay? And this formula is actually what happened exactly when you work with the derivation of A. If you, if lambda and lambda prime are derivation and, and you do this operation, you obtain here exactly the value of this derivation on A. So what you put is the same formula, but with a more general uh, uh, situation. So this is uh, what is called a Lee Reinhardt algebra over Ka. So the examples, obviously, the first one, the first example uh, is L equal 
the derivation uh, of A. Actually, this is the final object in this category. Well, I, I, I have not defined what is a map of K, K A Li algebra, but this is something uh, easy. This is the final object because everything by definition goes to, to here. But there is, uh, th there is another uh, interesting example. For instance, every time you take an ideal in A, uh, so you can consider the logarithmic derivations with respect to this idea. That means the derivation uh, which respect uh, the ideal J. This is obviously a submodel of all derivations. And if you take this inclusion as anchor map, so you have all the properties. This is very, very easy. So this is another source of uh, Reinhard Lee, Reinhard algebras. And there's another one. Uh, well, this is uh, right now is not very important, but it is also uh, interesting. If you take L, uh, the one term of the filtration of A K. So remember that this was canonically the direct sum of this. And if you take, and this is obviously by definition of the filtration uh, and all properties, this is an, an model. Actually, this is an A A by module, but I only consider the module on the left. Uh, and if you take the bracket of two operators of order one, so it is again an operator of order one. So this is uh, this also uh, it has both structure a module and Cayley algebra. And if you take the projection, of the second factor, it satisfies all this property. And this is another this is another example of Lee Reinhardt algebra in some way. You are adding to this uh, this to the first example. You are adding in some way a trivial. Actually, it's not so trivial because element here act on here. Uh, they don't commute, but uh, <coughs> you are taking the uh, this a kind of semi-direct uh, product kind. Okay. Well, these are uh, three examples. Uh, of uh, uh, actually here you have a lot of examples of uh, Lee Reinhardt algebra. So the main uh, the main uh, notion uh, at the level of Lee Reinhardt algebra is what is called the enveloping algebra. The enveloping algebra of Ali Reinhardt algebra. So, but uh, before giving the formal definition, uh, <laughs> we need uh, uh, we need a few definitions. So, first, uh, what is uh, uh, an algebra? A K algebra over A. Remember, A is always a commutative K algebra. But an algebra, a K algebra over A, is a K algebra, non commutative in general, R, uh, endowed with uh, a map of K algebra. This is a map of K algebra from A. So this is not an R is not an A algebra because element in A uh, uh, do not commute with element in R in general. The only elements uh, commuting with element in, in R are the, the elements in K. But there is a map from A to R, a map of K algebra. So this is uh, something that we can, we can call a K algebra over A. OK? Uh, a typical example, a typical example 
is if you take M and A module and you take R, the K linear endomorphism of uh, M, so this is a K algebra, and it is uh, endowed with a natural a natural map from here to here, and this is the multiplication by element in A. So this is a typical example of uh, a K algebra over A. <clears throat> so what is a uh, so here? Suppose that uh, suppose that L is a Lie Reinhardt algebra, always over uh, K A. And suppose that R is an K algebra over A. So what is an admissible map from L to R? Admissible. So we say that a map is admissible if uh, three properties hold. So the first one is left a linear. Well, left a linear. Here we are. We only have uh, one a module structure, but here we have two because I forgot to say that every, uh, to to recall that every time you have this map. You can consider R as a left A module or as a right. So actually, you have a bi module on, on R. So here, we only <coughs> uh, 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 have the left A linearity property for, for this map. Second property is that uh, uh, this map is a K Lee K algebra map. And the third property uh, is what happens if you take an element, an element here, and you multiply on the right and on the left. So in principle, these are different, but we obtain something uh, precise. This is row lambda of a times the unit of r usually this is uh, this is very long to write and we usually write lambda of, of a okay this is uh, the, the usual notation so these three properties uh, are encoded in the definition of admissible map from a Lie Reinhardt algebra to any uh, k algebra over a uh, yes. This question uh, over there are your the, the structure as a Lie algebra is it with the commutator. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, always any any associative al algebra over K uh, can be interpreted as a K Lie algebra with the with the brackets. Okay. With the yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and again, there is uh, <laughs> there is the, uh, there is uh, some uh, obvious uh, admissible maps. If you take the derivations, or if you want uh, the logarithmic derivations with respect to an ideal, and you take the inclusion uh, in the endomorphism ring, is a K algebra over uh, over R or over A, excuse me, uh, and these are uh, Lie Reinhardt algebras, and so the inclusion is an admissible map. This is uh, absolutely clear, and actually this is the the, 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 the motivation for for the definition. Okay, so the point is the following, and this is proposition. Definition. 
Um, given a Lee Reinhardt, Reinhardt algebra L, that is a universal, that is a universal uh, couple, U, L, Iota, where U, L, is a K algebra over A and Iota is an admissible map from L to this uh, algebra. So uh, there is a universal. Well, I, I am not going to, uh, to give the detail, but you can uh, you can do uh, you think a little bit uh, what means exactly universal every time you have another k algebra over a and an admissible map this factorized through uh, through this universal algebra okay and this algebra is what we call enveloping algebra of l this was in the original paper by reinhardt Enveloping algebra. Well, I forgot to say that uh, Lee Reinhardt algebra is a generalization of Lie algebras. Lie algebras are the same thing as Lee Reinhardt algebras if you take k equal a. If k equal a, so these are Lie algebras, and this is the usual enveloping algebra, but this is a uh, <laughs> little bit more general and much more useful, actually. Okay, so uh, let's give some properties of enveloping algebras. Properties. Of UL. Well, uh, <clears throat> the first one, is that UL is filter. UL is filter. Uh, the first term of the filtration is A. And actually, in order, because in, in principle, it's a quotient of A, but actually, they include the A there is an inclusion of UL. Well, uh, this is very easy. I am not going to, to give now the details, but actually what happened is that there is a, uh, as in the case of the vile algebra, <coughs> uh, because of the definition of, uh, of a Lee Reinhardt algebra, remember we had an anchor map so this anchor map and the universal property of the enveloping algebra gives uh, a natural map to here. And once you have this natural map, you see that actually A, uh, it is included in UL because A is included here. Okay, so this is the reason because uh, this is an equality. Well, I mean, a, a natural iso, a natural isomorphism, but we can we can treat it as an equality. So the f zero term is a, and uh, the f e term it is uh, well generated. It is generated by products of and the one. Lambda k or lambda g with g less or equal than e. So you can you can take all the products of elements in L. You take the, their image in UL, and you take all the products, and you take the bimodule. Actually, you 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 can take the bimodule 
uh, over a of this uh, generated by this uh, or even better you can take the left a module generated by this product and this is equal to the right a module generated by this product and so it gives you something inside ul and in that way <laughs> you can obtain a natural filtration this is exactly this is almost exactly the same thing as in the classical enveloping algebra of Lie algebra. And uh, you can take uh, the graded ring. And again, because of the definition and because the properties, this is a commutative. Commutative graded A algebra. And in degree zero uh, is right A. And again, again, by the same reason as before, or formally the same reason, we have a canonical map from here to here. It goes to the one part of to the one the one piece of this uh, graded ring. Uh, and so this is a linear. And again, we obtain by the same reason as before, we obtain a canonical map from here to here. Okay. Uh, and we have a theorem that was proven by Reinhardt too. It is the Poincaré Birkhoff bit theorem. This if L is uh, finitely generated. Uh, no, excuse me. It's not necessary to have finitely generated. Is projective. Or A, the projective A model, then this natural map is an isomorphism of graded A, uh, <coughs> A algebra. Okay. And so this was also proven by Reinhardt in, in the original. Uh, paper. Okay, but actually, uh, there is something that we have still to recall in order to understand uh, better all this stuff is uh, what are models over Lee Reinhardt algebras? Well, modules, for the moment, you can, <coughs> uh, it's not precise, but at the end, it will be real models. So uh, I will give the definition in order to short a little bit uh, all this uh, definition for left models. So, what is a module over a Lee Renhar algebra? So, we start with a Lee Renhar algebra. L and what is a left module over L? Well, this is this is a uh, an A module. A module, let's say M, uh, but it is endowed with an action of L. So we have an action. L times M to M. Uh, let's say we take an element lambda in L and element in M. We can call the action uh, <laughs> lambda dot M. And it has some properties. The first one is the linearity 
over a. What does it mean? This is a lambda dot m is the same thing as a lambda dot m. Okay, so this is natural, something very natural. That is a Leibniz property. Leibniz property. So Leibniz property is needed because you can multiply here or you can multiply here. So if you act some element of L on AM, this is not the same thing because if not, you, you will have a, a rear bilinearity. But you have a term. And the term you, you, you have is lambda of A M. This is really the Leibniz property. And the last one, is what we can call integrability. And the integrality uh, <coughs> uh, concern the bracket, the Lie bracket structure. So if you take lambda dot lambda prime m minus lambda prime dot Lambda m, so this is the same thing as dot m. Okay, so when you have an action of L on m uh, with all this property, we say that this is a left module over L. Actually, it is useful to have in mind a weaker uh, notion is if you put here only k linear, not for all a's, but only for, for constant, let's say constant element. So in that case, we can think that this is also an useful notion, and I will, I will call, perhaps not the, the usual terminology, a pre-model, pre-model. Okay, so, but well, this is uh, uh, only a comment about uh, because sometimes, and we will see later, that uh, the actions that appear do not satisfy this property for all elements in A, but only for constants. So in that case, uh, we can we can say that this is a left model. And what about right models? Right models. Well, it, it is. It is. Uh, we can see that we have m l goes to m. Let uh, I will uh, write the action of element on m on the on the on the right. So we have a linearity, a linear. Uh, so in that in that case, that means that if if we have m dot a lambda it is the same thing as a m dot lambda well usually we write this a on the right because it is more visual but m it was a module over a and a is commutative so we can write on the left or on the right and it is useful to write on the on, on the right in order to, 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 to be more visual, but let's say in that uh, way, okay? So a linearity and Leibniz, Leibniz in this case a little bit at first sight, a little bit, uh, uh, so M A uh, lambda, it is the same thing as uh, M lambda A. I can put this A here if you want. 
by the same reason. But now the, the, the uh, correction term is minus minus lambda of a m. And integrality is the same thing, but on the on the on the right. Okay. So this is exactly the same thing, but uh, written on the right. Okay, so these are uh, uh, two natural notions uh, of models, left and right models over a Lie Reinhardt algebra. And the question is that uh, uh, left L models. Are the same thing as left UL models. And this is because, because the universal property of the enveloping algebra, and this works uh, almost in the same way as in the classical uh, Lie algebra. And right. Right, L models are the same thing as right L models. And obviously, this is the, the usual notion of model over, over a ring. Okay, so this is the, the, the explanation of uh, uh, why a universal enveloping algebras are useful. Okay, so uh, actually, there is a reciprocal of Poincare Birkhoff bit theorem. And this, uh, uh, it is useful to, to, to have this statement. So, proposition. Suppose that we start with a positive, positively a algebra. Uh, <clears throat> and suppose that uh, the Associated graded ring is commutative. Commutative. And uh, in that case, uh, is uh, very easy to prove that uh, the term uh, F one of this filtration is canonically excuse me ah excuse me excuse me I, I forgot I forgot something so I suppose that RF is a positively filtered calgebra such that the associated graded ring is commutative and there is a natural uh, map on uh, the endomorphism of the zero term. Okay, suppose that we are in the, in the usual case of differential operators. Uh, this is exactly what happened in that case. So in that case, uh, we see easily that the F1 term is canonically the direct sum of the F zero term plus the graded one piece. Okay, so this uh, easy exercise. And what happened here is that this is a, you can, you can see, let's call this A in order to relate with the things we have seen before. So in that case, this, 
this uh, graded piece is a, <coughs> let's say, uh, K algebra, Lee Reinhardt algebra. It is very easy, but but because the, 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 the usual operation on R on the left and on the right uh, will give you uh, uh, <coughs> this structure here. Okay, so uh, the reciprocal of the Poincare Birkhoff bit theorem says that if if uh, <clears throat> the symmetric algebra of F one R zero R this is the grid one piece is isomorphic to the associated graded ring. Then we have the reciprocal of the poincare birkhoff pitt theorem. We have that the enveloping algebra of F1R over F0R is isomorphic to R. Okay, so uh, this result is not difficult to prove. Uh, and it is interesting because it gives you Sorry, Luis, can I interrupt? So yes, sure. I've, I forgot what are our assumptions on K? K is a commutative ring. Even and for the PBW theorem you had before, K could be any commutative ring? Yes, yes. The, the only for the Poincare Birkhoff bit theorem, uh, in classical Lie algebra theory, uh, usually we use that K is a field, but actually uh, it is not needed. What is important is to have this property of being uh, projective over, uh, over K. And this is already done in the original paper by Randhar. They, uh, he, he, he considered a general K, a, a general ring K, commutative ring K, and a general commutative K algebra A. Okay, so this is, uh, this is already, it's not perhaps not completely classical, but actually you only need projectivity, not no other finiteness properties on on your rings okay okay thank you okay so uh, this actually what uh, what i am going to say you can you can prove directly but perhaps it is it is nice uh, to to understand these properties uh, as a consequence of this general fact because this general fact implies several things. For instance, the first one is that the Weyl algebra is the universal enveloping algebra of the derivations of the polynomial rings. Because in this case, you have this property. Okay, and so this property implies this. But more generally, if you have a smooth space, in characteristic zero, so that can be a, an algebraic, a smooth algebraic variety over a field of characteristic zero, or a complex manifold. Uh, so, mm, well, I forgot to say something that all things I explain can be shishified. Uh, that makes sense uh, at the shift level. So you have what is Lee Reinhardt, and in that case, people call Lee algebraids these objects, uh, and you you can uh, you can uh, you have also a universal enveloping algebra and everything, and so uh, in this case, in this case, uh, one proof that the differential operator is the enveloping algebra of the tangent shift. Okay, well, isomorphic if you, if you want, canonically isomorphic. Okay, because you also have this property at this for, for these uh, objects, for these uh, spaces. Okay, so uh, I think that we, we, we are as uh, 
well, uh, I, <laughs> I plan to, uh, to say some more things, but I think that it is a little late, so I will, I will perhaps uh, finish uh, and We can add uh, another example that uh, mm, uh, it is uh, probably much more familiar for, for you, is uh, the case of admissible, differentially admissible algebra. And in, that, in this case, K is a field of characteristics zero. Okay. So uh, this notion was uh, studied uh, by Luis Núñez Betancourt, and uh, I will recall it uh, pretty quickly. So this is a, a regular, Noetherian K algebra satisfying uh, several properties. There's one for all maximal ideals. At the same height. On one uh, for all maximal ideal, uh, the residual field is algebraic over K. And the last property is uh, same thing for each maximal ideal. We have a natural map from the localization of the model of derivations. Uh, excuse, uh, excuse me. Uh, this is included in the property. The model of derivation is a finitely generated uh, projective model of uh, rank equal the dimension of A. And for all maximal ideals, the natural map from here to here is an isomorphism. Okay, so this algebra, uh, as probably <coughs> many of you no, they appear naturally in many things, and they they are a good context to to study uh, many examples uh, in commutative algebra. And uh, these are for all these algebra, we have that the uh, differential operators of this algebra uh, can be uh, obtained in a natural way as the universal enveloping algebra of the derivations. Well, uh, I am going to finish because it is late, uh, but uh, on one side, this is not very surprising because uh, in some way or another, we know that in these algebras, uh, differential operators can be, can be uh, obtained or can be generated by derivations. But what I wanted to say, or I wanted to emphasize, is that this, this thing is something more precise than only saying that this is generated by, by differential operators. And actually, in the model theory, it is something curious, is that uh, the, the fact that the differential operators in any smooth space, in characteristic zero, I mean, appears as the universal algebra of the derivation 
is something that is not said, I think, that in any of the classical books and references of the module, but in all of them, uh, uh, starting with the, the first paper by Kashiwara, uh, uh, obviously he, he knew that uh, very well that uh, in order to put a demodal structure on something, you have to act derivation on the left, uh, satisfying some rules. The rules is the, the one I, I said before, but actually what happened that this is true is the fact that the differential operator ring appears at the universal enveloping algebra of, the, of derivation. This is exactly, and this is the precise result that perhaps uh, because it was not uh, needed or because it was possible to do with coordinates. This is the, 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 the thing that many, many times people uh, do is doing things with coordinates, but actually this is uh, an intrinsic thing and uh, there's nothing new. This is obviously this are uh, uh, some kind of reinterpretation, but I wanted to, uh, to start with this because this perhaps will motivate a little bit what uh, I will do in the next talk, uh, focusing on the case of where K is not no more a characteristic zero ring. And in that case, in order to, to have this kind of result, we need much more things. And actually, we will need has me derivation, uh, et cetera. OK, so I will stop there in order to respect more or less the schedule. Okay. Thank you, Luis. Uh, are there any questions for Luis? Feel free to unmute yourself and put your camera if you want to, or I, type it in the chat. I, I have a question. Uh, is it? Um, I would like to know whether this uh, universal uh, enveloping algebra has an explicit description or can be written in using known objects. Well, uh, this is more or less the, the exact situation, the, the same situation that in, in classical enveloping algebras of, of Lie algebra. You can, uh, if you take a, a set of generators of L, uh, you can construct this, uh, this universal algebra. And this is the, the way that uh, Reinhardt uh, proved that it exists, uh, is by taking some tensor algebra and by taking some quotient of this tensor algebra, but by the ideal, the two-sided ideal generated by the relations you need, okay? Uh, so actually, uh, I don't know if this is very explicit or not. Uh, uh, what is interesting is that because this object uh, solves our universal problem, so it is unique. So um, doesn't matter how you construct it. But uh, that's true. Every time, for instance, if you take L something free over A, in that case, you, you can have an explicit presentation of the elements. And you can write this element like you do in the Weyl algebra or, or in differential operator rings. OK? And actually, we do this in, 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 in some examples. Yeah. OK, thank you. Is there another question? So I have a question. So th there's a dual story to the whole, uh, to everything, right? So th for example, the derivations are dual of Kähler differentials and mm -hmm. uh, rings of differential operators are dual of modules of principal parts. So yep. is there a notion of something like a dual Lee Reinhardt algebra? Uh not clear to me it's not clear to me actually uh, what uh, we do i don't know if there is another possibility but uh, in order to generalize the run complexes to this setting actually instead of taking uh, omega this is the the keller differential model uh, the, 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 I think that the most clever thing we can do is to define as the dual. Okay. 
Uh, so we do the, the opposite thing that we usually do, okay? Uh, but uh, this is only in order to have a, a real the rank complex, like in, in the classical setting, from a Lee Reinhardt algebra. And this is the, the way that uh, uh, Reinhardt did in, in, in his original paper. Uh, he constructs a, a, well, this is the same thing as taking the alternate functions from L to A. And this is, uh, this, this plays the role of omega P L. Okay. But there is no, I think that there is no, um, at least I don't know any, uh, anything you can do directly at this level and after uh, to relate with L. So, and on the other side, if you use, for example, differentially admissible algebras, for instance, power series rings, you know that Keller differential are not good. So it is better to, to work with derivations. And, and in some way, we forgot, I think we forget some uh, the, the Keller differential and we only use uh, derivations and differential operators. This is more or less, but I don't know, perhaps uh, there is some, some results uh, at the level, because I, I know that you can, with Keller differential, you can take also the separate, uh, asso the associate separate modules and, and you have some properties, but I don't know if you really obtain some, something uh, that you cannot obtain with, uh, with derivations itself. So- Yeah, I think what I have in mind is something like if A was a singular, Algebra, so yeah, you know the the Keller well, differentials are not the dual of the derivations anymore. So. No, no, you, you are completely right. But well, perhaps this was, uh, yeah, this is something a point that uh, has to be clarified. Actually, all the theory I am I am mm, explaining here, it works for regular things. Okay, so this is the reason because we always assume that L is a free model or uh, projective, okay, uh, but probably there, there are many things that you you can adapt to the singular case. But uh, I am not talking on, on on this. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I think that you know much more. So <laughs> thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Is there another question? In the meantime, I ask you one question, Luis. Um, yes. you, you mentioned that uh, if the you have a smooth um, ring or algebra, then uh, developing algebra is the ring of differential operators. Is there a notion of like Nakai, like the, the converse is expected to be true? Like, you know, if the enveloping algebra is the ring of differential operators, then the original ring is smooth well, or something like that? Uh, actually, uh, I, I plan to. Uh, to mention at least something related with, uh, not exactly with Nakai conjecture, but uh, the, the way that Nakai conjecture is uh, related with uh, sadisky lipman conjecture. And uh, this is something that uh, it will be uh, uh, not the, the conjecture themselves, but the relationship between them, between them, okay? This is something that we can understand in, uh, with the, uh, with something that I will explain next talk. Uh, but uh, from the point of view of giving some kind of answer of this result, of this conjecture, well, I, I, I don't see now any, any concrete uh, way. Perhaps something to understand a little bit uh, better uh, the context of this uh, conjecture, but not to solve them, I think. Thank you. Okay, well, um, if there are no more questions, then uh, let's thank Luis again. And then we meet next week for uh, the second talk. <laughs>